And now, direct from Las Vegas. Welcome to Football Forecast Weekly. Each week, your host, Trip Mitchell, will introduce you to the top handicapper in Vegas, Dennis Tobler, and one of the top sportscasters in the U.S., Fred Wallen. Today's edition of Football Forecast Weekly is brought to you by MyBookie.ag. For the best in sports betting, go to MyBookie.ag, and you can win just like Dennis, Fred, and me. And welcome to another edition of Football Forecast Weekly. Hi, everyone. I'm Trip Mitchell. And I got the memo today from Dennis that we're all dressing up for today's show. So I've got the tie on. We'll check with Dennis and Fred and see if they got the same advice. You know, Dennis, you sent the memo out. Uh, what are you wearing today? Well, I've got my $100 haircut. So that's good <laughs> enough. But yeah, I'm in sweater weather here in Vegas. It's starting to become winter. It's going to be at least... I don't know if it's going to get above 70 today. Oh, you rat bastard. Uh, Fred, make me feel even worse, will you? Well, you know, my wife gives me my haircut, but Sandy has been able to do it. So uh, I saved a hundred bucks, but I didn't get a haircut. So, uh, but I would like to discuss uh, very quickly uh, the coaching in the National Football League, because uh, last week, uh, it's almost beyond compare. I, I've Obviously, these guys make four or five million dollars a season. They have to just be brighter and they can't make themselves like they're going to come up with some ingenious way to win. And basically, I'm talking about John Harbaugh and I'm talking about Pete Carroll. Carroll got lucky that they still won, but Harbaugh didn't. And if you're watching the game, folks, it's 2019 and Baltimore has just scored and uh, like 40 seconds to go. And uh, he goes for two. The odds in the National Football League of making a two point conversion are like 40%. So he's giving <laughs> an opponent a three to two advantage. You can't do that. You have to tie the game. Okay, you go to overtime. If you go to overtime, you've got the best kicker in the world in Justin Tucker. So it's a 50-50 thing going into overtime, but you're a slight favorite, actually, because you have Tucker. But let's say you win the flip of the coin. Obviously, if you score the first time, uh, the other team doesn't even get the ball. So uh, it's a done deal. But if Pittsburgh does get the ball, then um, uh, you still have the advantage in that uh, Boswell is a good kicker, but he's not comparable uh, to Justin Tucker. So for Harbaugh to say after the game, well, I did it because my defensive secondary was beaten up is nonsensical. It's ridiculous. Uh, there's no guarantee if it was 11 versus 10 uh, that Pittsburgh's going to score. That's nonsensical. You got 53 guys on the active roster, play them, figure out a way to play them. Don't give the other team a three to two advantage. Dennis, I don't know if you agree or disagree, but to me, it's just pure math. Don't be insane. Yeah, I got a kick out of it because on the TV, they says uh, something about, well, we know Harbaugh. He's in it for the analytics. And I thought, analytics, my ass. That's the stupidest move I've ever seen. Hardly ever do you make a two-point conversion in the NFL, and he's trying to do it. He should have kicked the, the extra point there, went to overtime, hope they got the ball. You know, and I'll tell you one thing, it really pissed off his quarterback. I mean, it really made him mad that they lost that game. Baltimore has trouble scoring, and maybe it's because of Harbaugh's slick antics. I agree with you about him, Pete Carroll, the Rams coach, too. Several of these guys, you know, they all think they genius attitudes can pull something out of the air when really they just need to play the game fundamentally. What in the history of football would you say Pete Carroll's call in the Super Bowl against New England might be the worst call ever? <laughs> well, it's the most obvious one, that's for sure. You know, the one that sticks out the most. My God. Well, anyway, let's get to uh, this week's games. And uh, can you believe it? The season is this far along. We're going to start with uh, a West matchup, the Raiders at the Chiefs. The Chiefs, nine and a half, 49 and a half, the total on the game. Dennis, we'll start with you and your $100 haircut. Well, um, I hope everybody has been paying close attention to my numbers and my, my totals, because uh, the totals unders are hitting over 60% this year. And I think I've identified most of those on this show as we've gone along. So 
as we go along today, I will be pointing out huge line moves on the totals, and those are to be taken seriously, maybe even more seriously than the games. I do want to say this, too, that this is a bye week for Indiana or Indianapolis, Miami, New England, and Philadelphia. So those teams are all pretty much on a roll, and I'm not sure they need a, uh, a bye week this week, but it's going to make it very tough for us to pick any games this week. And also, last week, the three double-digit favorites won and covered, Fred. So we can't throw out double-digit favorites anymore. And let me add one more piece of context to this while we're going. There's two teams in the NFC that are four games in the lead in their division. Okay, that's Green Bay and Tampa Bay. So don't be surprised if the last two, three weeks of the season, they don't play their starting team very much. They have a four game lead in their division and they've got their home court wrapped up. So unless they're playing each other, don't be surprised if some low rent teams beat these double digit favorites coming to the end of the wire. And don't be surprised if some of the double digit favorites that need to win blow teams out. So it's the time of year to be careful. Five weeks to go and uh, your bank rolls into balance. Okay. So what do you, Chiefs giving up nine, nine and a half at home. What do you think? Yeah, nine and a half at home. And I started uh, by talking about the under because it started at 52 and a half and went down to 47 and a half. And I can see why uh, both teams having trouble scoring. Kansas City's nine and a half. I'm going to take Kansas City, lay the nine and a half here. They were they beat the Raiders 41 to 14 the last time they played earlier in the year here in Las Vegas. I see no reason why it won't be the same thing, except for they're not going to score as much because the Raiders don't have Waller. The Raiders don't have a lot of things and uh, they're not going to score much at Kansas City. So I'm taking Kansas City and the under. Fred? I think the real Raiders have shown up. They're not a very good team. Now, a couple of times we said that during the season and they pop up for one game. I don't think it's going to happen again. They've gone through a lot this year. And as Dennis indicated, without Waller, without Ruggs, they're not the same team as going into game one anyways. And, and uh, I disagree about uh, Derek Carr. Uh, Dennis is real high on him. I'm not. I think he's an average quarterback in the National Football League. I'm going under on this one. I, I don't think uh, the Raiders, Raiders might not score. Kansas City's defense is playing a whole lot better versus the first five games of the season and since then. So I think the Chiefs defense will totally control the Raiders and uh, the Chiefs might pop up with uh, 40 themselves. But I still think the game's an under game. So I'll go under in uh, Kansas City versus the Raiders. OK, and Fred, we're going to stay here. Saints at the Jets. Uh, let's see the Jets getting six, five or six. It's open at a six. It might be at a five now, 43 and a half the total. What are your thoughts on that game, Fred? Two bad teams. Uh, yeah, I have to take the points. That's all. It's, uh, it, it's mandatory. Uh, Taysom Hill did not play well last week. Um, and I, I guess he'll play better the second time out, but again, uh, Jets surprise now and then I'm taking the points, uh, and this one, I don't think uh, I don't think Dennis is going to disagree. Dennis, your thoughts? No, I'm not going to disagree here. Uh, this is an interesting total game. The total opened at 43, and then I think some wise guys bet the thing up to 44, 44 and a half, because boom, as of midweek this week, it dropped clear to 42. And I seen some 41 and a halves running around there, so. You know, these wise guys play games moving these numbers to begin the week. They get people on them and move them, and then they come back in and fire away. I look for the under to be a heavy play here, too. I agree. I'm going to take the Jets plus the points here. Uh, New Orleans, we said it last week, have quarterback problems and everything else. And I, I'm not impressed with their coach, as everybody else is either. So I'm going to take the Jets here plus the, the five. Okay. And Dennis will stay here. And so uh, my – my Christmas gift to you, the Sean Payton, Payton uh, fan club shirt. I should cancel the order. Yeah, cancel that one. Okay, well, I'll, I'll do it. Okay, Jaguars at the Titans. Minus, oh, we miss San Francisco, right? Uh, this is the order I'm going in. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. I wanted so to I, talk about San Francisco. That's why I wanted it to be San Francisco. Okay, we'll, we'll say when San Francisco comes up, I'm, I'm right there for you, buddy. All right. Okay. 
Tennessee at, at the at uh, the Jaguars at the Titans minus ten. Uh, now it's I've seen an eight and a half, uh, 43 and a half the total. Yeah, another game where the wise guys are playing around early. Tennessee Open is a nine point favorite here, and then it, they drove it up to ten, and then boom, the next day it's down to eight and a half, and I even see some eights around. Um, I don't know the, the total on this game, 46 and a half down to 43 and a half. You can understand why the, the line went from 10 down to eight and a half because the total has dropped so much too. Here again, we've got a, an underplay. Jacksonville evidently can't score uh, because they haven't scored all year. And Tennessee, they, they've only got a running game. So we know that the, the clock's going to run fast in this one. And uh, it looks like an under, and it looks like I'll take Jacksonville plus the eight and a half. The money moved it that way. I'm going to respect the money there. Uh, and I'm, I don't know how good Tennessee is for sure. Okay. And Fred? Uh, Titans the week off uh, should be better. Uh, but again, without Henry, uh, that rushing game, which was near the top, is nowhere now. I mean, and he made the difference. I don't think it was the offensive line. Take a look at what happened since then, the average per game on the ground. I mean, it's like half of what, what Henry was playing. So, again, it, this is a pure underplay for me. And uh, as far as the uh, who's going to win, I don't know, eight and a half. Uh, again, uh, as indicated, eventually Lawrence is going to wake up. But, again, Urban Meyer is not a great coach in the National Football League. Um, I'm going to take the under and uh, go from there. Okay, and we're going to quickly talk about a game that's not on the board, but that is the city of St. Louis uh, plus $600, $700 million versus the L.A. football Rams. Uh, any thoughts on that game, Fred? $790 million. Okay, okay so obviously uh, Georgia Rosenblum, uh, Frontieri, uh, <laughs> moved, moved the Rams. And, uh, you know, interesting that Carroll is a great swimmer, and he drowned. A long, long time ago, and people were still questioning, how is that possible? How is Natalie Wood possible to drown if you couldn't swim? Uh, things just happen miraculously in this world, and that's why you're listening to and watching Football Forecast Weekly. I can tell you that. Uh, St. Louis was upset when the Rams left. I didn't care one way or the other, to tell you the truth, because ever since Georgia took them over the, you know, the first time, uh, you know, they moved them to Orange County from uh, the Coliseum, uh, Fred got totally turned off. But on a serious note, St. Louis said that the NFL basically took advantage of him and lied to him and things like that. So they're going to get the money and the, the whole league now, the National Football League will, will pay it. It won't be just a, a one guy situation. So it's a lot of money, but uh, not for these guys in the National Football League. All they got to do is raise parking prices one more time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Dennis, your quick thought on the uh, St. Louis payout. It's a lot of money. Yeah, it is a lot of money, but in the, in the scheme of things, it's not a lot of money in the NFL. So okay. uh, they'll make the payment and St. Louis is not going to have a team. Well, St. Louis doesn't want a team. My wife just yelled, St. Louis doesn't want a team. <laughs> they know they're happy with their Cardinals. <laughs> well, there, the everybody's happy then. <laughs> okay, we're going to take a short break. We want to thank my bookie for being part of the team here. We'll be back after this short I'm out. Get the latest breaking news in the sports betting world. My bookie monitors and releases information pertaining to online sports books and professional football. The good as well as the bad. Hey, that uh, young man you're looking at with a $100 haircut over his left shoulder, uh, you will see some awards and over his head, you'll see some awards for a documentary that uh, he was very nice enough to have me work on called Now Place Your Bets, which has won film festivals, considered one of the best documentaries to come out a couple of years ago and won a lot of awards. And Dennis, you should be very proud of it. I'm very proud of a trip and you should be too. Uh, you won an award for the narration of that movie and that's a pretty big deal. So yes, we're very proud of Now Place Your Bets and and we have it online on nowplaceyourbets.com where everybody can get a DVD or get the streaming version of the movie. So it's doing real well and really appreciate everybody's support. Okay. And the best way to find it would be to? Well, the best way to find the movie is go to nowplaceyourbets.com. 
On there, not only is there a blog history of all of our interviews, but you can buy a DVD and you can find the streaming version that you can save to your video library. Fantastic. Okay. You've been uh, wanting to talk about the Cincinnati San Francisco game, the Niners at the Bengals. Right now, uh, it looks like a pick 'em. What are your thoughts? Well, uh, Cincinnati opened at two, went to one. And now I just looked a minute ago and they are San Francisco has moved to a one point favorite here. So it looks like something must have happened with Cincinnati. There must be an injury. There must be some COVID situation or something. This is a game that's going to be a lot of scoring in 47. The total open It's 49 now. But the line has completely swung from Cincinnati to to San Francisco minus one or at some spots minus one and a half now. I don't know what the deal is here because Cincinnati should be able to play with San Francisco. It seems to me like both the Rams and the 49ers are playing down to their competition every week. That might be the case. But here in this case, I, I just think San Francisco is a better team. And I have to appreciate the line move too. Whenever an opposite favorite moves, the money moves to an opposite favorite, it tends to be correct. So I'm going to take Frisco here. I'm going to lay the one point, and I'm probably going to play the over. Fred? Okay, so uh, uh, Samuel's not playing again for the 49ers, and he makes all the difference in my mind in the world. Not only is he a fine receiver, he, he rushes the ball five to six, seven times a game. Uh, Jarapolo by himself is not going to win the game. Without Samuel, it's going to be a very difficult circumstance. But Burrow... A young quarterback, sort of like Herbert, is up and down. So, and, and San Francisco defense is pretty good. So, I really think this one's too close to call. It's one I would stay away from one way or the other. It, it should be a close game, should be a good game. It's a game I'll watch. Um, but uh, as far as who's going to win, Fred's going to pass on this one. Hey, Fred, okay. do you have any indication of why the line moved from Cincinnati 2 to the 49ers minus one? Uh, uh, again, the last thing I heard, again, folks, we're taking this earlier in the week, Samuel's not playing. Maybe he will play. And again, folks, based on COVID and who's going to be sick and who's not, if you're going to wager on this or any of the games, I'd wager late Saturday night, early Sunday morning. I really would because you know, if you find out that a quarterback's not going to play, like we found out this week that Fields will play for Chicago, if that, if that makes a difference. But that's not COVID, but I'm just making the point that you never know about COVID. You never know who's really vaccinated and who's not, who's immunized and not vaccinated. So watch out for little tricks like that. And I don't know why the line moved. Maybe Sam, Sam was going to play, but I heard when he got hurt, he wasn't going to play for five, six weeks. So I'm not a doctor. I'm not in San Francisco. I don't know. It's a game I'll pass on. Well, okay. the key point, I think the key point you made there, Fred, is that we do this show earlier on in the week. And we haven't had a chance to figure out why this line has moved for sure. But by the end of the week, everybody do your due diligence and find out why the lines moved. I'm going to go with the money. That's what my business does. We hedge fund these lines. So when I see a Cincinnati minus two go to a San Francisco minus one, I'm going to follow that money lead. And that's usually the proper way to go in that situation. But I agree it's a pick game. I don't know why the line moved, but I'm going to go with it. Okay, uh, Dennis, while well, we've got you here, the Ravens at the Browns. Uh, right now, Cleveland, it's up to, started at two, it's at a two and a half, and about a 42 uh, total on that. What are your, your uh, inclinations? Well, the actual open on that game is uh, Baltimore opened, uh, the Ravens opened as a one point favorite, and 44 and a half was the total. Uh, the Ravens played so horribly, and getting that loss is going to hurt their morale, that one-point half-yard loss from last week. Um, and, and now Cleveland has moved to a two-and-a-half-point favorite. So the, the, the totals dropped from 44-and-a-half to 41-and-a-half, and Baltimore has moved from a one-point favorite to a two-and-a-half-point underdog. Did I say earlier in the show it's going to be tough to pick them this week? 
Uh, you mentioned <laughs> that. Pick yeah. him this week, you know, uh, in, in this situation, I'm going to go against the line move. I haven't seen anything out of Cleveland yet. I think Baltimore may have a morale problem, but then again, maybe Lamar's upset a little bit about losing that game last week and will play a little harder. Uh, Baltimore hadn't been able to score for four weeks or five weeks or all the season. So I'm not sure how many points they can put on the board. Uh, Cleveland at home, I don't know what the weather will be. For them to move to a two-and-a-half-point favorite, a lot of wise money going on that side. Uh, I'd still stick with Baltimore plus the two-and-a-half, but the under is the play. Okay, Fred. I will uh, predict that uh, neither ba Baker Mayfield nor Lamar Jackson will win the MVP in the National Football League. Well, you're That's, going out on a limb on that one there, Fred. Yeah, good yeah. call. Uh, Got a very strong play on that one. Um, I'm disappointed in both of them, uh, but Lamar Jackson, especially, I think, uh, you know, earlier in the season, they were talking about him as the MVP. No, he makes bad plays, ridiculous plays, throws the ball where he shouldn't. Uh, uh, he's got enough experience now not to make some of the passes that he's made. The last second one, which is Harbaugh's fault, uh, shouldn't be on Lamar, but it uh, shouldn't be on Jackson nor Andrews uh, for not catching it. But um, my point is, Neither team has played up to expectations. I'll take the under and uh, pass on uh, uh, the, 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 the victor in this game. I, I don't think a lot of points will be scored. And, and Dennis mentioned the word morale a few times. That's basically what I said at the beginning of this show. If I'm a member of the Baltimore Ravens, I'm one of the 53, and my coach just put me in an underdog situation going for two and losing the game, I'd love to have been in that locker room or I'd love to have seen a tape of that, what they were saying in that locker room or when they get home, talk to their wives, because you can't make an error like Harbaugh did. So I think that word morale is perfect that Dennis uh, used a couple of times. And I think the rest of the way, we might see a down locker room as far as the Ravens are concerned. Okay. And Fred, while we have you, Falcons at the Panthers, um, Panthers uh, minus two and a half, 42 and a half total. The number will have a better number on that. What are well, your, uh, what are you thinking about that game, Fred? I'm not thinking at all about that game. Uh, you know, if they, I'm watching uh, the red zone. Don't show us that game, please. Black it out. <laughs> please black it out. Uh, at this point, neither team has a quarterback that's playing up to expectations. Uh, not a lot of points. You said 42 is the total? Yeah. yeah. Dennis, what, what's the number right yeah. now? Uh, total uh, drop from 45 to 42. You got to go under. You have to go under with you the way to. these teams have played. I don't think there's any question. Dennis, take it from there. Yeah, I think you have to go under two here. You have to respect the money. Uh, two and a half points on Carolina is just usually the home court advantage that they are a home field advantage that the odds makers allow to a team. This is a toss-up game. I have no idea who's going to win it, but I don't think there will be many points scored. This could be a 12-10 to 10 game. So I'm <laughs> taking the under, and I'm going to pass on the side, too. Okay. And let's uh, talk about a big a a NFC East matchup, the Cowboys at Washington. Uh, I saw a five. Now it looks like a four and a 49 total. Dennis, where are we at? Yeah, uh, it's uh, – been a strange week for the Cowboys on the uh, bet lines. Uh, they opened a four and a half, went to five. Here again, I think it's the wise guys playing around a little bit because they want a better number when they're going to jump on Washington. And then it went from five to four to three and a half. And when it hit three and a half, it, they bet it back up to four again. So I don't know who the bookmakers are here that's leaving four and five open for middles, but they're not very smart moving the money like that, moving their numbers like that this early in the week. Um, Dallas, I don't like Dallas with Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott is the most overpaid quarterback ever to play in the NFL, ever to play in the NFL. He's the most hyped quarterback ever to play in the NFL. And he's the lousiest quarterback to ever play for a great offensive line team and with good running backs and a, a decent coach. Washington's back in the hunt for the playoff games. Okay. And they barely beat. LA, or they barely beat the Raiders here in Las Vegas last week, and they were lucky to do so. <laughs> but it was just a miserable game. I mean, neither team could do anything right. I'm not that high on Washington, but this is a conference game. 
And I do think Washington has a better defense. And I think they'll stop Dak Prescott. I'm going to take Washington at home in this one. Plus the four. Okay. And Fred, you can cancel that Dax Prescott uh, annual or uh, monthly calendar that you were going to get Dennis for Christmas. Cancel no, that sucker. You know, Dennis before talked about the word morale. The opposite <laughs> circumstance I think is happening with the Washington football team. Yeah. I think they're playing their hearts out to for Ron Rivera. I really do. They're on a winning streak. Who would have thought so? I mean, uh, uh, you know, this team isn't that talented. Uh, they've had all kinds of injuries, but still, uh, Dallas uh, <laughs> is Dallas. Uh, I'm taking the I'm talking I'm taking the home team here, taking the points. I hope it goes up a little bit, as you indicated, Dennis. At some point, uh, again, when we're taping this earlier in the week, I saw four and a half, but it's down be below that now. I hope it goes back to four four and a half. But I'm taking the Washington football team against Jerry Jones, Dallas Cowboys. Okay, and we'll do one more and then take a break. Seahawks at the Texans. Boy, it, Seattle's had a rough year, but they're still seven and a half point favorite. Uh, looking at 42 41, the number. Fred? Okay, I have to say this. Uh, folks, please tell me, Dennis, tell me, Tripp, tell me, you're Seattle, you're up by seven. There's four minutes to go against the 49ers last week. You've got the ball inside the five yard line and it's fourth down, and you don't go for a field goal. Please explain to me why he wouldn't go for a field goal. Why? Because Pete Carroll thinks he's the smartest man in the room. You give yourself a, again, it opened, it was four minutes when they, when they had the ball inside the five. It was like two and a half minutes when he didn't go for the field goal. The 49ers came right back, ran it down the field, almost tied up the game. Dennis, I, I don't have a strong opinion on this one. I think I like Seattle because Russell Wilson sort of came back last week and he found uh, the lost in space uh, uh, Metcalf uh, a few times. And I don't think he'll forget him again. But Dennis, when you were watching that game, why the heck didn't Carroll go for the field goal, putting his club up by two scores? Help me out here. Well, I, I agree with you again. I don't know why he didn't do that. I, I think these guys, I think these coaches do read the press clippings and if they do something fantastic they think they're going to get their name in the paper I guess I don't know but uh it was ridiculous and they could have lost the game so I'm not sure about that in this particular matchup here going down to Houston Houston showed they have nothing here again play the under boys 44 it opened it's at 41 now I don't know how low it can go but I don't know if Houston can score so it might it might stay way low uh, I'm tempted to take Seattle in this game. I mean, Russell did throw the ball better. They have to win. Uh, uh, they just have to. At this point in the season, Houston's probably shot. When we're talking about morale, we're talking about their morale is probably shot. If I had to play the game at seven and a half, I'm going to take the road favorite, and I very seldom would do that. Okay. When we come back, we're going to talk about a team that's been undefeated in the last six days. The Detroit Lions. You're watching Football Forecast Weekly. We'll be right back. This is a review of Dennis Tobler's Now Place Your Bets by Canada Real Casino Online Service. Now Place Your Bets is a must-watch documentary for anyone interested in the world of casino and online sports betting. It is a chronicle of the dramatic rise in popularity of sports betting in the cities of Las Vegas and Atlantic City. It has now become a multi-billion dollar industry worldwide. And for those of you keeping track at home, last week Dennis insulted women as officials. This week, Sean Payton and Dax, Pre Dax Prescott. Uh, there's room for one more, Dennis. Anyone else you want to uh, uh, throw a, an H-bomb at? No, we'll see. If it comes up, I'm going to throw it. So. Okay. <laughs> the Broncos versus the Lions. Uh, Detroit getting seven and a half at home. They did come off a win last week. Congratulations to the Lions. And it, 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 they didn't do it easily, by the way. They uh, did it on the last play, but uh, a win nonetheless. What, what are you thinking about this one, Dennis? Well, I think they'll be buoyed from that win. I think it'll help them mentally. I also think that they play tough defense. And here again, it's another game that's going to go under the 42. Denver played horrible last week. 
And uh, I just don't get the feeling that they care much. I don't know why they don't care. They're right in the hunt. They're, and they're eight point favorites this week or seven and a half, whatever. I'm going to take Detroit. I don't think there'll be much scoring. I don't think Denver can win by over a field goal. So therefore I'm left with the one win Detroit Lions as my selection. And one win and one tie. Mind yes. You. Okay. <laughs> and we'll go out to the left coast, Fred. As long as Jared Goff doesn't fumble the ball away a couple of times, I like the Lions also. Yeah, I don't think Denver's proven that it can score a lot of points. So I'll take uh, uh, the uh, Detroit Lions on a one game winning streak now. Uh, and I'll take the under in this game too. And, and I still expect Goff to have one good game before the season ends. Might be here, even though Denver's defense is, if you look at the stats, Denver's defense is near the top. Uh, sometimes uh, stats uh, don't tell the, the the story, the whole story. Um, I'm going to take Detroit, the Lions, uh, to make it a, a two-game winning streak. And uh, again, you know, I think the, a lot of the world last week was, pull, I mean, you, I got a lot of friends and, and relatives in Michigan. So I had a slight lean. I wanted them to win for that reason. I think a lot of people around the country wanted them to get that first win just from the sake of the players. Uh, they played hard. They just uh, aren't very good. And I think they'll get uh, victory number two here. Yeah, it's funny. I got a text from my brother just the start of the fourth quarter saying the Lions are in danger of winning one, and and uh, they tried to lose it, but uh, what the heck? Okay, now let's, uh, Fred. Since we've got you right here, let's talk about the Chargers. Uh, they are hosting the Giants, and uh, I'm looking at a ten and a half uh, numbers moving around a little bit. But Justin Herbert had a good game, and they showed a lot of moxie last week. Yeah, they, they, they did uh, play better. Uh, they've been inconsistent, though, uh, during the season. I think Herbert will have a big game here against the Giants' lack of defense. Uh, and, and, again, who's going to quarterback for the Giants at this point? We don't know. Again, we're doing this earlier in the week, folks. Uh, the Giants might be down to their third-team quarterback. And if that be the case, obviously, uh, the Chargers have even a much better chance of winning. I'm going to take uh, the San Diego L.A. Chargers uh, to uh, to win pretty big uh, in this circumstance, Dennis. Whoa, 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 whoa. Fred, you're going to lay double digits. And then if they go with their, see, I'm not going to wager till Saturday night. I'll find out if, uh, I think Glennon's out. Um, uh, Donnie Dimes is out. So if they're both out, you're going with your third team quarterback. Uh, you got to go with LA in this circumstance. So, so I'll break a rule and I'll take LA as indicated, I've already told you that Herbert's going to the Hall of Fame. So uh, <laughs> I, I expect four or five touchdown passes from him in, the, in this game. Now, the negative for, for, the, for the Chargers is, again, we don't know, uh, Keenan Allen. Uh, right now, he's under COVID protocol. We're not going to know what happens by Sunday. He's got to uh, uh, pass two negative tests uh, between now and Sunday. That makes a big difference. He's one of the top wide receivers in the National Football League. So I'll, 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 I'll take the Chargers one way or the other. And that's a double negative passing, a double negative. So uh, for any grammar teachers out there, you can write Fred at <coughs> Fred's address will be put up. Uh, Dennis, well, let's hear what um, you have to say about the Chargers. I know you love Herbert. Well, I, I, uh, I did say at the uh, start of the show that double-digit favorites went 3-0 and last week covering a spread. And you can't be afraid to lay the points this time of the year. And this is a perfect situation why uh, the total is down to 44 from 47. The game started at 7.5, and, and then the quarterback situation came to light for the Giants that their starting quarterback still had a sore neck. And then it goes down the ladder and they're all hurt. So nobody knows who's going to quarterback the Giants at this time. The Chargers are 10 and a half point favorites. I think they'll come close to scoring the 44 total. But uh, I'm hoping that they can not just come shy because I don't think the Giants will put one point on the board in this game. And I look for it to be a 31 zip game, 38, three, maybe. That's it. The Chargers will win and cover. Okay. And let's talk about a game. Uh, just one of the partic participants was in one of the weirder Monday night games. So this is Tampa Bay at Buffalo. Who the heck knows what the weather is going to be like in Orchard Park, New York? 
but uh, right now we've got Tampa Bay uh, minus three with a total at 53. And some weird stuff on that Monday night game. Dennis, we'll start with you. Well, uh, uh, the, the weather in Buffalo won't matter because the game's in Tampa Bay. Oh, <laughs> got me on that one. Got me on that one. Okay. Well, I Dyslexia like to get you now and then, you know. I like to keep you honest once in a while. Anyway, this is one of the highlight games of the week, obviously. Brady going up against the Bills quarterback. Look, the Bills, uh, they, they can't run the ball. And Tampa Bay can stop the run. Okay? And uh, we've all seen what Brady can do. I'm not sure Buffalo's defense can stop them at all. High total on this game, 52 and a half, 53. Uh, the weather's going to be fine in Tampa Bay. It should be a shootout in this one. And I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure I can take Buffalo or Tampa Bay. I think three is the perfect number there. And if I was a bookmaker, that's where I'd leave it lay. I have no other opinion. And Fred, uh, I predict that uh, Tom Brady will throw more than three times against the <laughs> Buffalo. He threw 51 times last week in, in their win. Um, this will be a high-scoring affair. But again, the word morale. Uh, they, the Buffalo Bills managed to lose a team, lose to a team in the, in the Patriots that threw the ball three times. I have followed football since the age of five. Dennis, I'm sure, and Tripp since the same circumstance. How many times did you ever see an NFL team win a game by throwing only three times? I don't know if I've ever seen that before. I saw some list. Uh, again, I, I, I'm totally, I don't know how it happened. I, I really don't. Obviously, uh, Belichick's doing something right with the, with, with the Patriots and uh, to, to, to beat Bills, uh, the Bills morale has got to be flat as, as anything. And, and again, the other side of it is that uh, uh, the Bucks know that they're going to win that division. The Bucks know that uh, they're going to win a couple games in the playoffs. The Bucks have Tom Brady. So uh, I got to think a lot of points will be scored in this one. And uh, Dennis might be right. Three might be real close to the perfect number. So I'll go with the over and uh, figure that uh, the Bills will definitely score a few touchdowns. And I know the Patriots and I, I knew the, and I know the Bucks will. So I'm taking Brady and the, and the over in this one. Okay. And Fred, let's talk about a Norris division game. The Bears at the Packers. Packers minus 12 and a half and total 43 and a half, 44 right in there. Well, I know that, uh, that uh, Roger's toe is immunized. He's okay, <laughs> he, he's okay to go. Um, Fields will be going uh, for uh, the uh, the Bears instead of Dalton. That makes a difference, but not as enough of a difference. I don't know. I can't. In this case, I'm not giving 12 and a half. But the Bears' defense is better than rated in some circumstances. I don't know about the weather. I mean, Midwest weather uh, this time of the year can be horrendous it could be snowing so uh, that number is, to, is too large so probably going to go the under and uh, see what happens with uh, Rogers uh, sore toe Dennis um, Chicago uh, is the most poorly coached team in the league I guess I mean that naggy guy is a horrible coach Chicago 12 and a half point favorite. I don't care if Fields comes back and plays. I want to tell you something about him last week, though. When Andy Dalton started and they fell behind to Arizona, 14 to zip, it wasn't Andy Dalton's fault. The ball hit the receivers in their freaking arms and then bounces up and the other team picks it off and runs it back for a touchdown. That's how the Cardinals got a 14 zip lead in that game last week and threw it all out of kilter. So you're going to set Andy Dalton back on the bench and put the guy in who hasn't done anything all year long. Okay. That's fine with me. I'm going to take green Bay. I'm going to lay the 12 and a half points. The weather's going to be shitty. We all know that. I mean, it's never nice in green Bay. Have any of you people been to green Bay? Anybody that's ever been to green Bay summer, winter, spring, or fall. It's one of the horriblest places in the country. They're in Casper, Wyoming. Okay. Those are the two places where you never want to be. 
Maybe Buffalo, you could throw that in there too. But Green Bay is going to kick Chicago really bad. And then they're going to start resting Rodgers. They may rest him in this game too, because they have a five game lead in their division. Chicago's in their division. It really doesn't matter much. You know, Chicago might care because Green Bay don't. So those are the things you're going to have to be careful of these last few weeks. What team cares and what team doesn't. Here again, I'm going to lay the double digits. I seen them score at will last week these NFL teams, and I'm going to lay the 12 and a half and think they'll win by two touchdowns and points. Uh, and by the way, Dennis, I used to work for a company out of Green Bay, Wisconsin, the Fort Howard Paper Company. And I told some of our clients that our toll-free number is 1-800-GO-TO-HELL, and they yeah. believed us. <laughs> yeah, they're in it. So uh, let's look at the uh, Monday night game, the Rams at the Cardinals. Cardinals minus three. This should be a great Great Monday night matchup. Boy, there's some tough games this week, huh? There's some really good matchups, and this is one of them. Uh, the Rams, I don't know. Uh, I, I can't get a grasp on it. I really think the Rams and 49ers play up to their competition. They are better teams than they show. I think they have more talent than they show. Maybe they're just starting to come around now the last of the year. Arizona, like I said last week, they, they, got, they jumped on the early lead there. And they pretty much had the game the whole way, but they still only won by 11 points. So any, either one of those interceptions for touchdowns wouldn't have went. Why then Arizona would not have covered last time. Um, this game in, in my eyes is a toss up and they have Arizona three down to two. And I did see some one and a halves out there. I'm going to take the Rams in this position. I mean, the, the cards have won about as many as you can expect them to win. And they're winning because Kingsbury is fooling everybody, okay? His defense isn't playing normal defense. Their offense don't play normal offense. He has his own way of doing things, and he's fooling people, and they've won. Now some of the defensive coordinators will catch up. I think the Rams are going to run the ball, and I think, uh, I think they'll try to keep the ball out of Kyler Murray's hands. I'm going to take the Rams plus the two on the Monday night game. Hey, and Fred. Well, the Cardinals beat the, uh, the Rams uh, in Los Angeles, in Inglewood, uh, so there's no reason uh, they shouldn't win at home. Uh, second game back for a quarterback, usually better than his first game. He had missed what four games Murray had, so I think he'll play better. I'll take Arizona here. It should be a high-scoring affair on Monday Night Football, and I think on uh, ESPN2, Eli and uh, uh, his uh, big brother will be doing their thing. It'd be fun to watch that. So uh, even though I'm not a big fan of uh, Eli's brother, but anyway, the point being, I'll take the Arizona Cardinals to cover the small number and uh, win at home. Okay, and uh, a quick thought: uh, I, I think Monday night, Peyton and Eli are off for a couple weeks. We're not going to see them until the end of the season. Stanley, uh, so that's and good. I happen to like them, and in the first quarter, they didn't have a guest, and that to me is better television. I, I'm well, not you're a big the only fan. one that watches it. No, there are a couple million people who watch it, oh, by the way. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. Hey, I do want to make I do want to make a, a comment about some of the the reactions we're getting to the show. Most of the reactions are very good, but on Facebook, once in a while, we can get some trollers. I had a guy on Facebook last week claimed he went seven and oh in the NFL. Well, there's 4,000 people in one million dollar contest here. There's four million, there's 4,000 people in another million contest here, and nobody went five and oh last week. Okay, so this guy out of Arizona who puts his Facebook picks up saying he went seven and oh is another one of the fraudulent schemes along the 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 mode that the Trump campaign uses to grift people so be careful when you're out there on facebook and when people insult our show just see what they've got to offer you because we give you winners and most people just give you the guff okay well hey, one good. more thing one more thing our facebook page is football forecast so go to facebook slash football forecast and you can see our Facebook page, and I post comments and commentary and more games on there as the weeks go on. So make sure you follow us on our Facebook and our Twitter accounts, and as well on YouTube. Okay. Fred, as usual, Dennis insulted a large group of people today, but uh, 
you know, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about the show. Well, let me just add uh, one thing. It's not Don J. Trump. It's Donald J. Drek. And for those of you who are Italian, you'll know what that means. Now, have I insulted enough people? There, uh, you, you, you have. won. <laughs> Fred won okay, the you, insult challenge. Yeah, yeah. Put it this way, Fred, you insulted someone that got 70 million votes. So, uh, God bless. Anyway, for our whole crew, Fred and Dennis on trip, I want to thank Lee for making everything happen. But most importantly, I want to thank you for watching each and every week. We love doing this. And, uh, We've got some great football coming up and some special shows. So we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great weekend. Thank you for listening to Football Forecast Weekly, an affiliate of TSI Network.